It's the Terry Sullivan Show. Today's guest, former mayor of South Lake and author Laura Downey Hill. And featuring Rich Lloyd and the Not A Real Band. And now, Terry Sullivan. How you doing over there? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. You're looking good. You thank you. Playing great as always. Yep. Well, thank you. And thank you're you about you're about to uh, you're about to leave town. To go uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, Boise. Idaho wow. this week, yeah. Is there a lot of places you'd rather be than Boise, Idaho? <laughs> you know, actually, I think the weather's going to be I'd nice. I'd say the weather. <laughs> oh, nice. I'll, t I'll take the nice weather, for sure. What's, what's the artist, uh, wh who's the artist that you're going to go with? Uh, Chad Brock. Chad Brock. And, yeah. he, and he's, yeah, he, he made he, famous the song. Yes. It's called Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, she what? said yes. I said wow. Yeah, it was his uh, big, big hit in uh, late '90s. Yeah, maybe yeah. early early 2000s. Yeah. So you're gonna tour with him for a little while. We're gonna miss you. Oh, well. Jones, Jones, thanking God for the relief. Yeah, absolutely. She's uh. very. Uh, don't you have? Don't you have a tour to go on? Or something? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. In the absence of, uh, what's the guy's name that usually comes? Um, uh, Terry. What's his name? Escapes me. <laughs> he's on tour as well, I think out in California or he's somewhere. He's a busy guy. Yeah, he's busy. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he's all over the place. Well, yeah. he's, he's, he's like you. He's ultra talented and always in demand. So, but I'm glad you're here. Of all the musicians that I know, you're one of them. I, well, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It's great to be here, and, and when I say that, you know, that's just an expression. <laughs> you know, we can just keep that going, but I, I have to talk to Laura. I was going to say, you want to invite him down? <laughs> this, this is fun. Laura? Terry. <laughs> my, my good friend Laura Hill is here. I'd call you Laura Downey Hill, but I, I don't um, want to. No, Laura Hill. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm great. Here, here I am again, yeah. you know, hustling books. <laughs> Well, you, you you are, but they're kind of hustling for you. Yeah. Right, yeah. right now, you look great as always. Oh, thanks. I'm rested. No more politics. Yeah. Just writing books. Yeah. If I've got something on my mind, I put it down on paper. It's a great way to live. Yeah, we're going to talk about this new book that you are uh, already have already started on. I think you said you have about five chapters already done. Yeah, yeah. And it's all it's completely different than where you are, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. How's Joe? Joe's great. He's working as hard as ever, and um, you know, somebody people ask me all the time about the American dream. You and I've talked about it before, and uh, he's living the American dream. But it's a lot of hard work, up early, and I think last night he got home about seven o'clock at night, went in at five thirty. But people love ice cream, and so Texas ice cream is doing great. We're well, he he's uh, Joe is. Uh he is a smart dude. Yeah. He's a smart he guy. He married me, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have regrets. <laughs> I'm sure you're not one of those. I, th I think you Some days. <laughs> I, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, before y'all got married, you told his mother it, oh. it would never end in a divorce, maybe in a box. <laughs> in a box. I think I told her that at the wedding. <laughs> she, God bless her. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, now he, you know, I love Joe, and, and he's built a, a, a great business with Texas Ice Cream. And I talk, I tell people uh, when I talk about it and it comes up, mm -hmm. that it, the, these ice cream trucks are not, I mean, these ice cream trucks are rolling Dairy Queens. Yeah, absolutely. There's, but the ice cream is better, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, it's kind of a, is it, is it a yogurt ice cream? No, it, well, it's a true butter ice cream. I mean, yeah. it's um, yeah, definitely got a lot of butter in it, so a soft serve, and um, even better than scoop 
out of the out of the bin so it's yeah. really delicious but it's not the ice crystals that people get yeah, yeah. it's a really true yeah. um, almost an eggy texture yeah. yeah and you can get you can get anything I mean the trucks first of all are beautiful yeah two hundred fifty thousand dollar trucks but you can get anything off of them. I mean, mm -hmm. you can get anything you can get at Dairy Queen, you can get off these ice right. cream trucks. Well, and the great thing is it rolls up to you, right? So yeah. what, whether yeah. you are throwing a corporate event or a birthday party graduation mm -hmm. event, the party comes to you. Yeah. And then when you're done with them serving, you don't clean up. They just pull out and buy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody's happy. So, yeah. yeah, it's a great business. Yeah, although he complains all the time. I mean, you know, Joe... <laughs> You know, he just never, he never satisfied. No, I think every small business, yeah, I, I bet you're the same. Every small business person is just never happy. We enjoy uh, it. Yeah, so, yeah, you enjoy being grouchy. So, uh, uh, so, and when he's thrilled, you know something really, really good happened. I, I tell people all the time, I, how you doing, Terry? Well, I have nothing to, to complain about, but I really do miss it. Yes, yeah, so I just miss the complaints. We're, we're standing out at the truck one time, at, at, the, at his pickup truck one time, and I I don't know, I guess I'm expecting for him to, to uh, complain about something and he leans on the truck and he says, you know, I have nothing to complain about. Life is good. <laughs> I, said, I, said, yeah. oh <laughs> I could, should have recorded it for you. should have recorded that, so yeah. But I think that's what drives, especially <clears throat> entrepreneurs and independent business owners and, and people that have just started it themselves yeah. and have the sweat and the tears is yeah. that they own everything and they own every emotion and everything mm -hmm. is exaggerated because it's theirs yeah. and they put their heart and soul into it and you know that mm -hmm. from this place it's just yeah. it's your life right this is your yeah. place yeah there's something about it you know when you when you build a business from the ground up from uh, from scratch and if you're lucky enough to be successful yeah if you're lucky enough to be successful uh, it, 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 there's such an emotional connection right? because people see what you are but they never see where you were. Oh boy, exactly. You know, they never see where you were, they never, they don't see uh, the, the, the pain, uh -huh. the sweat, tears, the heartache, the getting up some days and going, I, we're just not gonna make it, that kind of thing, they don't see that. They yeah. see the success of it. But that's, but as a business owner, you, you, you live in, in the success, but you also live in the failures. Yeah. You know? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I think we've talked about that before. You learn much more from your losses than you do from your successes. Yes. And the best thing that we can do for each other is to share both the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Because that helps others maybe not make the same mistakes that we made. Yes. But but to your point earlier too, it's like no one sees what happens before the doors open and mm. after the doors get locked at yes, night. That's right. The worry and the concern and the stress <laughs> and the bills, but you just keep pushing through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, it's yours. I, I would say that uh, about every aspect of life, what do you do? Well, life is up and down. It's, it's valleys, it's mountaintops, and, 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 it, and it's always, it's a pattern. Yeah. It's oh, a yeah. pattern, mm -hmm. you know? Somebody told me one time that life is three phases. You're either headed toward problems, you're in problems, or you're just coming out of problems. Mm -hmm. But what's the principle there? The principle is, is you have to push through. Mm -hmm. You have to push on. Because there is, there's something about persistency. There's something about persistency and pushing, getting to the other side, and feeling the thrill of victory. Right. Well, when I wrote my first book, Walking in My Shoes, <clears throat> that was what I figured out. It was, it was a journey, and that whether I liked it or not, I could look back and there was a definite path and the ups and the downs and why did I do that that way? Mm -hmm. And then later in my life, <clears throat> faced with a similar situation, did it differently, did it smarter, yeah. also uh -huh. knew more people who could help guide me to make better decisions. And the one thing I've heard over and over again about that book from folks is they really were playing their own journey through their own mind as they were uh, reading yeah. the book and yeah. a lot of people reached out and said, I want to write a book now, too, about mm -hmm. my journey. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. it is. It's, it's all a journey. Good, bad, it's all a journey. Yeah. And you either learn from it or you keep making the stupid mistakes over and over again. And, and, I, and Laura, I think that's the, I think that's the, uh, uh, I think that's life. I think that's understanding life. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. You're on a journey. 
It's not going to always be great. It's not going to always be bad. It's just going to be in between. Right. But the journey, it's right. how you yeah. handle the journey mm -hmm. that makes a difference in where you end up, where you end up in your destiny, I believe. Exactly. Yeah. So much is in your mind <clears throat> and in your faith and in your who surrounds you. Are you surrounded by the kind of people that lift you up or are you surrounded by people that bring you down? And those are the decisions along that journey that can make it easier easier it's not always easy but if you're surrounded by the right people yeah. it is do it's definitely doable and you can get a lot of enjoyment and give a lot of enjoyment back to other people that you know that is and we, we, I've got to get to this uh, book I have so many questions about it and it's a great book and you've already sold over 500 <laughs> well my first shipment yeah so when, when I published <laughs> the book I can order books to be shipped to my house so that when I have a book signing party you know I'll have books to sign and I've gone I, so I ordered 500 thinking oh that'll last me six months and it's lasted me two weeks yeah, yeah so well, now I'm on my second your first uh, book signing you had over 200 people there right oh, it was it, it was huge um, yeah there were I, I signed 210 books and um, I was, I couldn't use my hand for the next, I'm left handed and I write awkward anyway, so I couldn't use my hand for the next two days, but it was great. Yeah, it was yeah. nice to have that kind of support from my community and from friends mm -hmm. and um, people came from Carrollton and from Flower Mound and yeah. from Fort Worth. It was, it was really a nice event, it really was. Your first book, your first book has gone great. Yes. I mean, just uh, better, uh, better than you thought. Oh gosh, I thought I was going to sell fifty copies. Well, yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great book, and you've gotten incredible feedback on yes. it. Mm -hmm. This is what I like about your writing, and 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 you write uh, for people to learn by. Yeah. You, you you write you write positively, but you also you also write to the point. Yes. The life that people are living that may not have answers that may give them solutions about where they're living in life and it actually helps people move forward. Yeah, but, you know, one of the things I learned at being the mayor of South Lake more than anywhere else in my life was just tell people the facts. Just tell it like it is. Yes, be classy and yes, use good judgment when you're speaking to people, but don't play games with people. Mm -hmm. And so what I, what I found in my writing is that that's really my style. And so yeah. I write the way I would say it yeah. to any group of people. You know, uh, Laura, I, I, uh, I, didn't just, I just now realized uh, that all your problems are tied to being left-handed. I, I, <laughs> I, I didn't. Well, it, it is a problem. I'm telling you, it's, <laughs> and it really is for me because I can't do anything with my. Well, I take that back. I learned as a little girl to play golf right-handed, but I can literally not do anything else with with my right hand. And there, there are a lot of things in life that aren't set up for left-handed people. You've right. got to be a little ambidextrous, and I don't have any of that in me. Right. So, right. Yeah. Well, let's get started yeah. here. But before we do, uh, happy uh, Daughter's Day to my, oh, that's right. to my yes. daughter, oh, uh, Danielle, and yeah, uh, who I'm my so daughter, proud. Maggie. Maggie, and, yes. yeah, I, I saw your post this morning. Yeah, I did it last night because I didn't realize it was a, <laughs> I have to look at Facebook to see what day it is. Happy Dog's Day, Happy Daughter's Day, yeah. Happy Son's Day. So, yeah. yeah, so I did find a nice picture of my daughter and my mother yeah. and I. And so I thought, yeah, it's nice to be a daughter, and it's very special to have a daughter. So. Well, I mean, Maggie's a, she's a, she's a great daughter. Yes. I mean, Y'all done a great job raising yes. that kid, and now she's an attorney yes. working for a, a good firm, and uh, she she deserves all the accolades that she could ever, yes, she ever, does. ever see. Anyway, for everybody out there, happy Daughter's Day <laughs> happy if you're a daughter, Day. all right? <laughs> where the Mean Girls Go, what an interesting title. Where, do you, where did you get the title? You know, it, titles come to me so easily. It's one of those things where you, you go, I, I don't know, but just I'm just going to read the book because the title's yeah, interesting. Yeah, like where do the Mean Girls go, right? And yeah. so, and I had never even <laughs> seen the movie Mean Girls. I actually went back and watched that movie halfway through writing this book. But when I was writing my first book, Walking in My Shoes, there were some stories in there of things that I had handled poorly with another woman, especially <clears throat> in the workplace, and it got me to thinking of the times that I've been treated really poorly by yeah. another woman. And 
I thought to myself, you know, what does happen to that? We all learn on the playground yeah. how, what our role is, and everybody remembers the mean girl from elementary school. Yeah. I mean, you never forget it. Yeah. High school, I was looking through my high school yearbook with my college, or, uh, my college, uh, some college friends, we were talking about the old, our old high school days, and I was laughing and I said, you know, when I turned the page and I saw one of the mean girls, it was like, that's all I saw on the page, was that picture <laughs> of the mean girl. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about the same in college. And it's funny, so we, it got me to thinking, where do those girls go? I mean, they obviously grow up. Right. Right? What? Do they stay mean? Where do they go? Well, a lot of them stay mean. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. but before we get into this, though, I, w I want to just be clear that you are a wonderful advocate for women. Yes. I wouldn't have written the book if I wasn't. Uh, yeah. I think women need to be mentors, to have mentors, um, to be trusted and loyal colleagues to other women mm -hmm. and because we are so capable and s capable of such great things mm -hmm. but too often we get in our own way mm -hmm. jealous cre jealousy creeps in envy creeps in mm -hmm. you know women haven't been in the workplace as long as men have been in the workplace <laughs> and we certainly haven't been in positions of leadership in the workplace right. as long as men have um, we are taking a lot of the bad habits that we learned on the playground and taking those into um, the workplace, into politics, into philanthropy, into the PTO, mm -hmm. and not treating other women the way that we should treat them. Um, so yes, it's, it's an empowering book about what women are capable of mm -hmm. and what we need to do better, which is basically get out of our own way. Yeah. You know, Laura, you, uh, let's make it personal. You are a, in so many different ways, so many different levels, a very successful woman. Mm -hmm. Person, but woman. Mm -hmm. Successful publishing business, uh, two-time mayor mm -hmm. of one of the, well, as statistics go, one of the finest cities in Texas. Absolutely. Uh, two-time mayor there and did a, an absolute fabulous job. Now, you've written two books and both of these books are just flying off the shelves. What drives you? I think the need to give back, the need to um, show how grateful I am for what I've been given because <laughs> most of what I've been given, well, almost all of what I've been given was from my mom and dad. You know, number one, the opportunity to go to college, which you know, didn't come easy to my mother or my father. Having that opportunity, being able to go out into the workforce, into the hotel business and, you know, move all over the country, then having the opportunity to come to work for my father's company and all the wonderful things that have come to my family because of that. Yeah. And it's just, and, and that's what I was always taught is giving back. So mm -hmm. it's just, a, it's a personal drive. I'm not saying it's not a personal drive I get a lot of pleasure out of it sure. and a lot of and I I like that um, I like the feeling you get from being successful and sharing that success mm -hmm. um, but I also like the feeling of sharing <clears throat> all of the things that I've done wrong and maybe helping someone to do things differently and that's the way it should be that's the way it should be. You can, people can help a lot of people by talking about their failures. Mm -hmm. Instead of always trying to build themselves up with their successes. You know, right. we, we all have a, a lot more failures <laughs> yes. than we have successes. Absolutely. And it's the failures that lead, hopefully, to the successes. But where, but, but where, where's the meat? The meat is, is, well, this happened and this is how I handled that. Mm -hmm. Or this happened and, and this happened to me because of that, and this is how I push through. Let me ask you another question. Mm -hmm. These are questions that you don't even, you don't even, you didn't even know were coming. <laughs> but I'm interested in this, okay? A lot okay. of this shows about, uh, as we talk, about what I'm interested in, so. <laughs> it's your show, your well, name. <laughs> I do what I, I do what I want to do. That's you know? right. <laughs> Not all the time. Uh, but let, let me talk about your home with, with Joe. Uh -huh. jo, uh, uh, Joe is your husband, and we've all, already talked about him just a, a little bit. But Joe is a, a very driven individual. Yeah. And you're a very driven individual. 
how do you make, when you have two people like that under the same roof, how do you make that relationship work? And y'all's relationship, your marriage, it works. How do you make that work? I mean, when you first got married, did you go, whew, this ain't gonna last very long and somebody's fixing to die here? <laughs> um, good question. I think we, what we have in common is that we use up our energy when we are out in the workplace during the day. Whether I'm out speaking and talking about my books or serving in elected office or serving in philanthropies and Joe running and my businesses, Joe's business. And then when we get home, we just don't want any pressure. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are like that. A lot yes. of people that are, are driven give it all they have and then when they get mm. home, it's like locking the doors to the restaurant. Yeah. You just want quiet mm -hmm. and a shared understanding of what the other person is mm -hmm. all about. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there, there are a lot of times where I'm running out the door and Joe's just getting home. Yeah. But he knows that I'm giving a thousand percent just like he gave sure. a thousand percent. So yeah. you know, we're not a... that way. We're not, we don't give it, a, we're just not high energy when we get home. I, I, I don't know how yeah. else to say it. But what I just got out of that is it's, not, it's important to understand the needs of your partner when they get home from a busy day and yeah. you get inside your own sanctuary and what do you, what do you need? Right. What, because you have to recharge. Well, I know my husband and I know he's got to be mentally and physically exhausted when he gets home. I mean, we work in buildings next to each other yeah. and I see the deliveries coming in and I see the drivers going out and I see people <clears throat> all over the place. And I know driving home in his pickup truck, he's got to be, mm -hmm. I can't wait to get home and, you know, put my feet up and sure. just relax. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. Um, I, yeah. I really, I'm really grateful that we both want that kind of a life when we get yeah. home at night. He's your greatest supporter. Well, maybe oh not. my maybe gosh, yes. Your, your father, your mother, of yeah. course, but, but he's your greatest supporter. Absolutely. I mean, he just really pushes you forward in so many different ways. Yeah. A lot of respect. For him, yeah. Thank We're you. the main. Well, you know, we, we kind of <laughs> yes. have to talk about this. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm but I'm enjoying you being just here. Kidding. I'm enjoying you being here. What, what is this book about? So it's really about um, it's it's real stories. Uh, number one, I'll tell you, it's a fast read. It's 13 chapters, 150 pages, and you can enjoy it in a you know long afternoon at the <clears> pool. Um, it is stories that every woman can relate to, and it is it's ageless and timeless. The stories are not about uh, what happened in 1980 or 1990. They're, these are stories that are happening to young women every day, to older women every day, and we don't, as women, don't like to talk about the ugly side. Mm -hmm and the unfortunate side and the unkind side yeah. of our relationship with other women, mm -hmm. whether it's um, just a, an acquaintance or a friendship or um, how someone has treated our daughter. Mm -hmm. um, it hurts, but women try to handle it themselves mm -hmm. and they don't like to talk about it. And the, the book is just filled with story. I bet every chapter has two to three stories mm -hmm. of this happened. And not, yeah. and not all that happened to me, happened to business women, happened to um, young, young daughters. Mm -hmm. um, every age, every season of life, yeah. um, how we have to figure out the complicated relationships between women. Is that, uh, are, are the, all the things that you just talked about, is that cultural? Uh, is that, you know, like there's some, uh, people in some cultures have a hard time getting out of their own way, but it's the culture they were raised in. Oh, I'm sure if you look at the world, yes, culturally how we raise children is different in different countries. Um, my experience obviously is living in, in our country and I always say it starts on the playground because the boys ignore us and the girls score us and that's where we learn that we, in order to be in the clique or to be one of the cool girls, which 99% of us weren't, including me, um, we just had this 
desperation to try to do things the way the cool girls do it mm -hmm. because we want to be one of them. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I don't know about culturally, yes and no. I, I think it's just a boy girl thing. Yeah. I just yeah. think it's a boy girl thing. And I don't know. I think if you looked at other countries, you would see it's still just a boy girl thing. Yeah. We are uh -huh. different and we are um, we act differently. We treat each other differently. Mm -hmm. And boys are much more physical. I don't care what what anybody says. Boys are much more physical, much more competitive. Um, girls compete in a different way, in an mm -hmm. emotional way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but can and, be but can be a lot meaner. Oh, in that yes. competition. Well, I say all the time, you've heard of the good old boys club, but you've never heard of the good old girls club. Mm -hmm. Girls just don't do that. We don't forget. We yeah. don't get over things as easily. Um, we, the way we look for getting over someone doing us wrong mm -hmm. is figuring out how we can get them back. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just it's just a girl thing. And, and, yeah. and most women, if you sit down and talk to them, will chuckle and say, yeah. absolutely. Are, are women, uh, when they want to get back, <laughs> are they more uh, methodical? Um, so, so what I talk about a lot in the book is um, there's a real misunderstanding about women that if you're ambitious and pushy and intense and overbearing, it doesn't make you a mean girl. A mean girl is someone who is intentional about their um, dislike or trying to hurt and trying to plan and plot. So when I say women never forget, we don't forget, but we, we usually give up on getting back at people. We just maybe don't ever want to talk to them again or mm. don't want to be in the same room as them. Yeah. But mean girls have malicious intent, mm -hmm. and they get pleasure out of hurting other women, mm -hmm. embarrassing women publicly, and they tend to surround themselves with women who like that kind of drama. Yeah. yeah and yeah. one of the things I talk about a lot in the book is you have to own that. If you're hanging out with a woman who's mean, who says mean things on social media, who's, who is cruel behind another woman's back, mm -hmm. um, and you're okay with that, just wait till it's your turn, because mm -hmm. someday it's going to be you. Mm -hmm. You said something a while ago that keeps, it keeps uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around because it's so true. You said uh, uh, the guys ignore us and the girls score us. <laughs> yes. I've never heard that yeah. before. We're going to yeah. talk about that. Laura, here's the deal. We did, I, I've got a lot more to talk about, but I, I don't want to wait another month and have you back. Okay. Do you have anything else going on in the next hour? <laughs> Do you have any pot, coconut piles? <laughs> Coffee and I, pie, I, I could stay all day. <laughs> I've got a, uh, uh, there's a coffee shop right on Main oh, Street. No, shop. I'm serious, I want you to hang around. Okay, I, I've got, happy I, to do that. I've got to uh, interview Sean over here, who's gonna be a great interview. But I wanna come back to this, because I got a lot, I've got, I didn't even get to open my book. Oh, you didn't open your book. Yeah. I would love, yes, I'm happy, Can you I'm do happy that? to stay, absolutely. I, I'd appreciate it. And, and while you're doing that, instead of just giving me a blank copy, if you could put oh, in here, <laughs> to my best friend in yeah, all the world, yeah. that'd be great. And the best barbecue restaurant, <laughs> in, I, I don't know, anywhere in North <laughs> Texas, so yes, absolutely. We're gonna come back in just a little while, okay. hang out, hang out. Rich, take us out, buddy.